Hi everybody, welcome to Universe View Odyssey channel. Why do scientific theories need interpretation? Newtonian mechanics is built on the three laws of motion, which are axioms. The special theory of relativity is based on two postulates, the principle of relativity and the constancy of light speed in vacuum. The general theory of relativity is also based on the equivalence principle. However, quantum mechanics is distinctly different from these two theoretical systems in its establishment process. In quantum theory, there is no postulate, the basis and starting point of the theory. While Newtonian mechanics and the theory of relativity are the work of a genius scientist alone, quantum mechanics is the joint work of several physicists. In addition, quantum theory was established in the process of solving the enigmatic atomic phenomenon based on various hypotheses and principles such as the quantum hypothesis, photon hypothesis, matter wave hypothesis, and uncertainty principle. The mathematical formula of quantum mechanics created in this way satisfied the experimental facts well, but the key concepts such as the wave function caused great controversy. Accordingly, a consistent interpretation of the principles and core concepts constituting quantum mechanics was required. Now, let's look at the contents of the Copenhagen interpretation, which became the culmination of the establishment of quantum theory. Physicists were hesitant to readily accept quantum mechanics, which began to take shape in the late 1920s. Einstein and Schrödinger were even disgusted with quantum mechanics. Because quantum mechanics is too far from common sense and intuition. Bohr proposed the Copenhagen interpretation at a conference of the International Physical Society held in Como, Italy in September 1927 to commemorate the 100th anniversary of the death of Alessandro Volta. In a lecture titled, The Quantum Hypothesis and Recent Developments in Atomic Theory, Bohr presupposed that, the core of quantum mechanics is symbolized by Planck's quantum hypothesis, which gives discontinuity in atomic level phenomena, and that, quantum mechanics demands a completely new reformulation of the physical concept so far. At the 5th Solvay Conference held in Brussels in October of that year and the 6th Solvay Conference in 1930, a heated debate arose about the foundations of quantum mechanics. In this debate, Bohr succeeded in persuading the physics world at the time to accept the interpretation of quantum mechanics he had proposed in the Como lecture. The so-called Copenhagen School physicists who sympathized with Bohr included Heisenberg, Born, Dirac, Pauli, and von Neumann. The Copenhagen interpretation is the standard interpretation of quantum mechanics. At the Como conference, Bohr emphasized that, quantum mechanical events must be expressed in the language of classical mechanics as a major premise of the Copenhagen interpretation and presented the following key points. 1. The state of a quantum system is described by a wave function, psi. This means the information about the quantum system that the observer has. 2. The description of the state of a quantum system is fundamentally probabilistic. 3. All physical quantities have meaning only when they are observable. The measurement involves wave function collapse. 4. Quantum system has wave particle duality and satisfies the principle of complementarity. 5. Quantum system is governed by Heisenberg's uncertainty principle. Now let's take a closer look at the contents of the Copenhagen interpretation. First of all, what is the meaning of quantum phenomena must be described in the language of classical mechanics, which is the basic foundation of the Copenhagen interpretation. The reason is that the experimental apparatus and the language expressing the results are concepts of classical physics. We cannot communicate in any other language. Quantum phenomena cannot be explained by classical mechanics. Nevertheless, it must be explained with the concepts and language of classical mechanics within the scope of the uncertainty principle. This is the paradox of the Copenhagen interpretation. 1. The state of a quantum system is described by a wave function, psi. This means that the observer has information about the quantum system. The wave function that describes the state of a quantum system as a solution to the Schrödinger equation is another name for the probability wave described above. If the wave function is a mathematical term, the probability wave is a visualized term. According to Heisenberg, the wave function describes tendency in quantum events and our perceptions of them, rather than being a realistic description of the quantum system. 
The wave function only becomes relevant to reality when observations are made to confirm the state of the quantum system. A key feature of the wave function is that it is a superposition of several possible states. The wave function that describes the state of a quantum system develops as a sum of several possible outcomes that can have the physical property we are trying to measure. As described above, since the wave function is a superposition state of several possible states, it can be developed by separating the various possible states. The wave function even describes a superposition of exclusive possibilities. For example, in a double-slit experiment, the wave function representing the state of a photon or electron represents the overlap of the wave passing through the right slit and the wave passing through the left slit. Therefore, in this case, it can be said that, electrons pass through both slits at the same time. However, it is absurd to think of such a wave function as a description of a particle. How could a particle pass through two holes at the same time? Even the Copenhagen interpretation opens the door to the imagination of the bizarre state of dead cats and living cats coexisting and living and dead cats. Two, the description of the state of a quantum system is fundamentally probabilistic. The quantum system is governed by chance and probability. This denies causal determinism, a philosophy of classical mechanics. The stochastic nature of quantum systems is mathematically well explained by quantum mechanics. The probability interpretation of such a wave function, first proposed by Max Born, was derived to match the mathematical formula of quantum mechanics with experimental results. A wave function is a mathematical description, not an actual wave, and measuring it is an act of observation. Therefore, this is a mathematical interpretation of the stochastic characteristics of quantum systems that are experimentally measured. 3. The object of observation is influenced by observation. All physical quantities have meaning only when they are observable. The measurement involves wave function collapse. The sentence, the object of observation is influenced by observation, raises the question of what the reality of the object is. Classical physics assumes that the object of observation exists independently of the observer and observation. Observation equipment is required for observation. The object has a different face depending on the observation device. The observation device can be considered to be in an intermediate position between the object of observation and the observer. Bohr emphasized that in the exploration of the quantum world, the object, the observer, and the observation device all form one system. The passage, all physical quantities have meaning only as observable quantities is the core of quantum theory and conflicts with the concept of physical reality in classical mechanics and relativity theory. In classical mechanics and the theory of relativity, physical reality, or objective reality, exists regardless of observation. However, in quantum theory, it is impossible to say that there is a physical reality without observing it. So, it raises the question, then what state was the physical object in before observation? The act of measuring causes a wave function collapse, is one part of the interpretation that has caused a lot of controversy to this day. How can the waves of the whole universe disappear at the same time as observation? It is difficult to comprehend common sense. The Copenhagen interpretation of this question is as follows. Quantum systems converge by observation. That is, a discontinuity inevitably occurs at the moment of measurement. But this assumption raises another question. Besides the place where the particle was discovered, what happened to all the countless other waves throughout the universe? How can it all disappear in an instant as soon as a measurement is taken? This is the problem of collapse of the wave function. Anton Zeilinger's 2022 Nobel Prize in Physics interpretation of the measurement wave function decay problem is a little different from the Copenhagen interpretation. Zeilinger said, the classical physics intuition that a probability wave spreads through space or follows the path of a double slit only creates the idea that as a particle is found in one place, it collapses in another. It's just a naive intuition to reconcile mathematical techniques with experimental facts. Zeilinger interprets the collapse of a probability wave as follows, saying, it does not happen in real space. The probability wave, which is a mathematical wave function visualized using classical physics intuition, is nothing more than a mental construct. The moment we find a particle in a particular place, spherical waves become completely meaningless. This is because the probability of finding the particle elsewhere has become zero. Naturally, there is only one particle. There is no need to assume the collapse of the probability wave. 
fall, quantum system has wave-particle duality and satisfies the principle of complementarity. The wave-particle duality and the complementarity principle have been explained in detail in other videos. In classical mechanics, the opposite and contradictory concepts are interpreted as mutually complementary in understanding the object in quantum theory. Since an object cannot exist as either a particle, existing in a very narrow spatial range, or a wave, existing in a wide spatial range, at the same time, these two concepts are always mutually opposed and complementary at the same time. This complementarity is found in all physical objects. If the uncertainty principle defines the limits to understanding nature, complementarity is a window into the strange world of quantum mechanics. 5. Quantum system is governed by Heisenberg's uncertainty principle. This proposition is probably the most shocking declaration that distinguishes quantum theory from classical physics. This is a property of nature that occurs because the act of observation itself affects the object of observation and because microscopic objects have the duality of particles and waves. Why are physicists not comfortable with the Copenhagen interpretation? The heart of the Copenhagen interpretation above is the following question. What can humans really say about nature? In other words, if the quantum system is affected by the act of observation and follows the uncertainty principle, then we cannot but ask the question. What is the original nature like? The Copenhagen interpretation emphasizes that it is meaningless, inappropriate or unnecessary, to say that the value of any physical quantity exists prior to its measurement. The reason why even physicists today are not comfortable with the Copenhagen interpretation is that they cannot confidently say that a physical quantity expressed in a formula actually exists. Bohr argued that quantum mechanics is not a theory that describes an objective reality independent of the observer's knowledge, but a theory that tells the relationship between the observer and the object. Bohr also emphasized that, we should not think that quantum systems inherently possess individual physical quantities independent of observation or measurement. And, we can only say with certainty what is shown by measurements. Thanks for watching. You can read this story in Injury Time, injurytime.kr.